I will make you understand. Hi, I'm Jay Boy, and today we're going to talk about the single most requested topic for Diggy's Pump Academy. What is going on with Pump It Up scoring? A lot of people that play Pump have a general idea. They have sort of the gist of how the scoring works, but very rarely do you actually find anybody who's willing to talk about the exact math behind the algorithm, and we'll get to why that is. So first things first, Everybody get out your pencils. We're gonna do some math. There will be a TLDR and general gameplay tips for people that don't want to remember all the math at the end. So the pump it up scoring algorithm is going to give you a step score based on the scores of every individual step. It is going to give you some multipliers. Those two are multiplied together and after that you are given a possible grade bonus. There is some rounding and that gives you your final score. To check out the step scores, we're going to use these numbers. If you get a perfect, you get a thousand points. If you get a great, you get 500 points. For a good is 100. A bad is minus 200 points. A miss is minus 500 points. And if you fail to hold a freeze every single time that freeze ticks, you are getting minus 300. Uh, it's worth mentioning that your score cannot actually go below zero and it is keeping track during gameplay despite the fact that it isn't shown anywhere in gameplay. So if you were to miss the first three notes of a song, you wouldn't be at minus 1500, you would be at zero. And that can cause a little bit of confusion later when you're trying to resurrect how the score goes. It is one of many situations that makes it very difficult to understand what happened from only looking at a result screen. In addition to the individual step results, you get a bonus. As soon as you have 51 combo or higher, you get a plus 1000 bonus for every step that adds to your combo. Those are perfects and greats. Every step that makes your combo go higher beginning at 51 combo, and that continues forever. That can go up to several thousand. It's been tested in UCS up to at least 10,000, and it is consistent. If you are playing a chart that has a bracket, three or more arrows at once, that can be an arrow with a freeze, that can be just I'll hit all three, that can be just a big freeze of hold everything. Uh, we know there are at least a six hit still remaining in the game. Uh, there was a 10 hit for many years, but that is now gone. For each of those, you get a bonus, which is the number of arrows in the bracket minus 2 times your step result. So if you hit a quad and you get a perfect, that is going to be the quad is 4 arrows, minus 2 gives you 2, times the perfect is 1,000. If you get a great on a triple or a quad, this makes the numbers very, very hard to understand when you check them out later. There are rare instances where you will see a score with the same number of greats be different on the results screen, and the reason for that is that one person got a great on a triple. It's very awkward, and it's another one of those reasons why people just don't really want to try and understand how these results happen. There are so many weird edge cases that just cause really small differences and it really frustrates a lot of players. When you combine all of these together you have your step score and you can now check out the multipliers. When we come to look at the multipliers there are three possible multipliers that can be applied to your score. The total step score will be multiplied by the chart level divided by 10. However, this number cannot be less than 1. So if you are playing a chart in the level 1 through 10 range, that will just be 1 and it will not affect the score. If you are playing on double, you will get a 1.2 times multiplier. If you are playing on rank, you will get another 1.2 times multiplier. These stack along with the chart level. So if you were playing a D25 on rank, you would multiply by 2.5 for the chart level divided by 10, you would multiply by 1.2 for double, and you would multiply by 1.2 for rank. These all stack very heavily, which in addition to the very high step counts on some of those charts, explain the extremely huge scores that are possible when you start playing at the top level. 
after you multiply those two together, you can add a grade bonus. These are only applicable if you get the grades necessary. There is no penalty for getting a bad grade. However, if you are able to get the grade of S, it will add 100,000 after the rest of your score has been multiplied together. If you get a grade of double S, it will be upgraded to 150,000. And if you get a grade of triple S, it will give you a bonus 300,000. If your total score after all of this is not a multiple of 100, it will round down to the next multiple of 100, no matter what the in-between score is. Even if it's 90, it rounds down until it hits a score that it can display. So checking our work has a tendency to be very frustrating. As long as you use simple cases, ones that don't have triples in it, ones that are a triple S score, you can very reliably get the score that you're looking for. However, let's look at something that's still fairly simple. This is an S that was sent in by Help Me the other day. Certainly a, a score worth celebrating. But let's see if we can figure out how this score happened. So first we take the individual step score, giving us 923 times 1,000 for perfects, 101 times 500 for greats, 22 times 100 for goods, and then we don't have to subtract any for bads or misses since they didn't happen. The max combo for the score is 1,024, so every step after the 50th gets an extra 1,000. That gives us 974,000 bonus for the combo. Given that all triples and quads were hit, and we know the number of quads in the song, there should be 66,000 available, giving us a total step score of 2,013,000. Now we get our multipliers. 1.2 for being on double, and 2.4 for playing on a level 24. And then finally, we had the S grade bonus, putting another 100,000 on, which brings us to a total of 5,897,440. Lopping off the 40 at the end for rounding, we now have 5897400. Clearly something's gone wrong. What happened? Well, as referenced earlier, the bracket bonus tends to be very difficult to keep a hold of. Most likely offender here is that there was a grate on a triple, which has caused some of that bonus to be lost. Little quirks like this make it so that even people that understand the algorithm don't really like to answer questions because it's hard to give exact answers without knowing absolutely what the score is at every second of gameplay. So. Why did you show us this? Do you actually know what you're talking about? Do we understand the scoring system at all? Yes. Okay, this is actually why nobody wants to talk about this. There are so many little tiny quirks and weird things and having to keep up with so many things that are not displayed in real time on the screen. Those make it very, very small and wavery and very difficult to pinpoint exactly why you always seem to be off by 2,000. We generally know, and in all cases, we can find one of the various quirks that has made the score weird. Most of the time, it doesn't matter. Which brings us around to the generalized gameplay tips. You don't really need to know the exact number and the nitty gritty of how this works as long as you keep in mind the general idea of what you're going to do while playing. So what does this mean for actual gameplay? As long as both players are playing close to perfect, generally the worst step result will determine your score. Obviously getting a great is worse than all perfects, but generally getting one good is going to lose to a large number of greats. Getting one bad will lose to a very large number of greats and goods. Getting a miss, especially since that gets rid of your S bonus, loses to an unbelievably large number of greats and goods. Your worst step result is generally going to determine your score as long as you are playing close to a level where you can full combo charts. When you hear top players commentating on pump, they will generally talk about combo breaks rather than total number of misses. If you get multiple bads and misses within the same span rather than breaking them up into different parts of the chart, 
it effectively is the same as getting one miss. The biggest loss of score is going to be the amount of time that you do not have a 50 combo. All of those times that you have to spend building up the 50 combo again are a huge score loss potentially. As long as you're continuing to build that combo bonus, greats don't actually matter that much as long as you're not trying to triple S the song. Greats don't really matter that much unless you're very, very close to a perfect score. Mashing is highly recommended in parts that are just too hard for you or you're too tired for tournaments. Generally, avoiding misses is very, very worthwhile, and anytime you can keep a combo through a section that your opponent has lost their combo, you will gain a huge advantage. Generally speaking, you don't want to stop moving. Above all else, never break combo. Absolutely never break combo. The biggest thing you can do for your score is to just keep combo. Well, I hope this has helped with some of the questions about pump scoring. Over time, it's really proved to reward consistent play over very high timing play, and that is pretty central to the identity of pump as a different game that has different type of charting. Any more questions can be sent directly at jboypiu on Twitter. Hope you have a good time with pump and look forward to more Diggy's Pump Academy videos in the near future. Thanks.